Alright, hello everybody. Today we're going to begin glazing our bobbleheads. So I just want to spend some time just reviewing some of the main things to, to focus on while we're doing so. First off, the glazes are located behind the pink table and there will be three jars like this of each color. You'll need to look in front of the jars. I have these little tiles to show us how the color turns out after it gets cooked again. You'll notice there's a little shine to it after it comes out of that kiln for the second time. Um, but it can be a little deceiving because you'll notice when you open these up, they look very different from the tile. You can see it's a little bit darker when I paint it on, but if you look really close to the rim here, you can kind of see some dried up glaze and you can notice it gets a lot lighter after it dries. So it can be a little confusing, um, but you just need to understand that if you do the two to three coats of this, cover up all the white spots, it should in the end turn out nice and shiny and smooth like the little tile. So I always tell people to look at that tile first to see if it's the color you like. Now imagine, let's say, I'm going to separate my pieces here. Let's pretend that I want to paint the shirt this turquoise color. Glaze is a little different than most paint, um, and you actually kind of want to glob it on pretty thickly. Like imagine as if you're like frosting a cake, and you can even kind of bounce and dab your brush up and down to work it into those little cracks of the clay. As the glaze melts, all these little cracks and textures will kind of reappear. But if you don't kind of squeeze that glaze down into those spots, you'll really notice those white areas you miss. Um, any area you miss will stay rough and not shiny, kind of like it is right now. And that really tends to stand out if you leave a lot of the white spots. So you can see I'm just kind of slowly applying it. I'm dipping in very often so I can kind of get that nice thick coat. Now I'm going to purposely kind of quickly just do a light coat on this arm so we can kind of see what that ends up looking like. Okay, but you can see I just kind of very carefully turn and kind of glob it in. Just remembering to dip in often. You'll notice the glaze dries really fast so by the time you finish your first coat you could go right around with your second right away. But you want to take a second to look closely to see if you can see any white of the clay showing through. So if I come over to this side where I kind of just did a real quick brush stroke, you can see I got a little bit of white showing through there. Focus it real quick. And you can see I, I miss a lot of these little dots. Now that might not seem like I miss much, but again, I was saying it will really stand out a lot if I don't go back and cover that because when everything else is shiny, it'll be hard not to notice it. So, for my second coat, I'm just looking for any little areas I miss. And then, it's important to keep a water cut by you. Now I can paint the rest of this shirt in the back here too. The one area I don't want to paint is I don't want to flip it over and paint like the actual bottom. It's okay if a little bit gets on the edges, but we don't want to actually paint in there because this glaze is very expensive, so we don't want to use it in areas we're not going to see. Now let's pretend that I finished that shirt and now I'm going to move on to like my hair. I want to dab my brush in the water cup, get rid of all the color, and then I like to just quickly dry it off before I go to my next color because I don't want to add more water to this glaze. When you're finished, the circle part goes on first, then the ring, and try to just gently turn it to the right. Okay, and then you go set this back where it came from. Let's try our best to leave these tiles at the glaze station so oh, there's nowhere to put them. And I go looking for that tile. I like that brown. So now I'll open that up. For really large areas, you could use a bigger brush. I have so many little texture lines on this hair, so I'm going to start first by just globbing and daubing it all in there like so. Dipping in often. I always get the question of can you mix glaze colors and that can be a little tricky because some glazes need to get to a hotter temperature to turn their color. So imagine if I mix two that are very different from each other, there's a chance that they could separate while it's being cooked. Now sometimes that creates a really cool combination where you might see a little bit of both colors and sometimes it will create a new color that you've mixed, um, but you never really know. So it's a little bit of a gamble but sometimes it's worth the risk. So experiment, but you would just mix the colors right on your clay 
not in these jars. We want to keep these jars just their true color. Um, you can also put colors on top of each other. So I might go back and maybe take a little bit of black and add a few little black streaks in my hair too, just to create some more variety. So take your time. We really want to get glaze on these really, really well. And we want to kind of take the time to experiment a little bit too, making sure you get it just the way you want it. Okay. If you happen to finish, clean your brushes. <coughs> Excuse me. At the very end, I like to do just a hand test. Clean your brushes really well in the water. Paint it on your hand and make sure no color shows up. And if it looks like this, then you just spike the hair up and put it hair sticking back up. Cover up your glazes and then set your projects on the tall counter um, behind my desk. All right, have fun.